dear students so now in this lecture we will uh, discuss about the dihydride catalytic hydrogenation in which uh, the uh, activation of hydrogen molecule will be done by oxidative addition okay so uh, this is or uh, this video this lecture will be on dihydride catalytic hydrogenation of alkenes in which the uh, activation of h2 molecule takes place via oxidative addition reaction so first i will discuss about the wilkinson catalyst so i will revise you again that uh, i have uh, uh, taught you three uh, catalyst under this category which are wilkinson's catalyst uh the shock ops bond catalyst and krebs tree catalyst so we will discuss the two catalysts mechanism that are wilkinson catalyst and shock ops bond catalyst so this is the catalytic hydrogenation cycle of wilkinson catalyst how wilkinson catalyst will act upon the uh, uh, hydrogenation of olefins okay now this is the rhodium complex which is stable catalyst and it is wilkinson catalyst in this wilkinson catalyst you can see that this uh, rhodium is in first oxidation state because this rhodium is attached to three bulky groups uh, that are three pph3 triphenylphosphine group so uh, there may be two pathways uh, for uh, this catalytic hydrogenation one is the elimination of pph3 in the first step ligand dissociation will takes place so this is the first step where this pph3 uh, one of the pph3 group will eliminate and thus form this kind of complex in which one site is occupied by the solvent but that will uh, regarded as the vacant site okay now it is rh plus one uh, metal center with two pph3 and one cl okay so this becomes 14 electron system it is uh, the original catalyst is 16 electron system while this uh, after elimination of this pph3 it becomes 14 electron system now it has a vacant site okay so it has vacant site on this vacant site this hydrogen can easily oxidatively add so here Uh, the hydrogen will first oxidatively add to this rh first center so we will get such kind of product in which we will see there are two hydrogen they are attached to this uh, rhodium metal center and this oxidation state will increase to 3 and it again it becomes 16 electron system so again the first step is the ligand dissociation and the second step is oxidative addition the same product can be uh, formed through the other pathway the other pathway may be there that is first this stable catalyst can react with this h2 and this h2 will add oxidatively and then uh, rh center will convert into rh3 its oxidation state will increase and its coordination number will also increase so this is oxidative addition so oxidative addition will helpful in the activation of h2 molecule dissociation okay then then uh, the, uh, the next step may be the ligand dissociation so these are the reverse uh, processes this may also occur first oxidative addition of h2 and then ligand dissociation or first ligand dissociation then oxidative addition of h2 okay then we will get the 16 electron system here now in this step after this step this alkene which has to be catalytically hydrogenate it will add to this metal center because there is one vacant site on this rhodium uh, metal center so this olefin will bind and it is again become 18 electron species and here the oxidation state of rh is third now after this addition you you know that there is an olefin and hydrogen with this rhodium atom so what will be the chances the chances is of migratory insertion of this hydride into this olefin 
so migrate my it will uh, that there is beta migratory insertion so this will in beta migratory insert and then it can form this remove the double bond and then it can be add like this so now this species now again it becomes 16 electron system and the oxidation state will remain the same and after this the final product will be formed after reductive elimination reductive elimination of this group and one of the hydrogen so both these hydrogen they are added to the product and after reductive elimination this is the product this is the saturated alkane this is alkane group and uh, the the ligand will uh, this uh, catalyst will again regenerate it. okay so this is a catalytic cycle so wilkinson catalyst you can see the difference between this uh, wilkinson catalyst and uh, we have already studied the monohydride activation of uh, that the catalyst uh, then uh, there you will you have seen that uh, the oxidative addition was the last step before reductive elimination while in this case oxidative addition is the initial step initial step and reductive elimination is the last step but there in that case oxidative addition takes place just before the reductive elimination reaction so this is the difference between this dihydride catalytic hydrogenation and monohydride catalytic hydrogenation reaction so again i am repeating again i am repeating the cycle here you can see that uh, this is the active catalyst this is the catalyst and this catalyst after removal of this pps3 ligand due to its bulkier nature it will convert into 14 electron species this is the active catalyst and this uh, can then oxidatively add this h2 and then convert this first oxidation state center to third oxidation state center and it become 16 electron system now this in this system this olefin will add after addition of this olefin it again becomes 18 electron system and from this olefin uh, this system my beta migratory insertion will uh, beta migratory insertion will takes place and uh, after this beta migratory insertion it again becomes 16 electron species and then after reductive elimination in it regenerate the catalyst and the product will be formed so this is the uh, wilkinson catalyst catalyzed catalytic hydrogenation now we will discuss about the uh, catalytic hydrogenation mechanism by shock opsborn catalyst how the shock opsborn catalyst will act during this catalytic hydrogenation in case of uh, this catalyst shock opsborn catalyst actually i have already i had already explained to you that uh, there are two olefins uh, uh, the olefins uh, is one but it is bonded through two uh, two pi bonded uh, dienes uh, so one uh, one molecule is containing uh, two diene systems so if we are representing it by uh, two olefins and there are two uh, the triphenylphosphine groups and positive charge on this complex to to counterbalance this positive charge there is counter anion so this counter anion is not coordinatively bonded to this rh as in case of wilkinson catalyst where cl was attached to directly it is coordinated to rh center but here these are the anions that only counterbalance this positive charge and uh, uh, during the catalytic process actually this is the stable catalyst and this catalyst is not a real catalyst this catalyst will convert into this this one where only it is bi coordinated only two uh, coordinated uh, tri uh, triphenyl phosphines are there and the olefinic structures they are converted into these kind of structures okay so that they cannot interfere during the uh, the hydrogenation process because they also have the double bond okay so they will not interfere in the catalytic hydrogenation process so the actual catalyst is this the the olefinic group will removed uh, in the form of the saturated uh, saturated uh, hydrocarbons okay now we will discuss how this active this real catalyst will act on the 
catalytic hydrogenation process so this is the catalytic cycle of opsporn uh, catalyst shock opsporn catalyst so here this is the real catalyst where only two phosphine ligands are attached to this rhodium and it is a 12 electron system okay so in this case first this olefin will bind to this metal center while you have seen that in case of wilkinson catalyst first its oxidative addition takes place okay and then after oxidative addition then olefin uh, will coordinate to the metal center while in this case you can see that uh, this rhodium metal center first coordinate with the olefin and this olefin after coordination it will form 14 electron system okay so first olefin will add then it will convert into 14 electron system after this olefinic coordination then oxidative addition cleavage of this h2 will take place so when this uh, h2 will oxidatively add to this metal center then it becomes 16 electron system okay now you can see that there is olefin and hydrogen so again beta migratory insertion will takes place so beta migratory insertion will uh, create this monohydrite type complex this is monohydrite intermediate you can see that one hydrogen is added to the metal center and after this monohydrite intermediate uh formation this becomes 14 electron system and after this reductive elimination takes place and this uh, this group and this group they will reductively annihilate and again they form the real catalyst which is 2 ele 12 electron system and this is the hydrogenated product okay so you can see there is difference in between the working of different catalyst so as you have seen that in case of the monohydrate uh, monohydrite cleavage you have seen that there what happened the oxidative addition was the second last step okay now you have seen the wilkinson catalyst so in the wilkinson catalyst the first step is oxidative addition and in this case the first step is coordination of olefin okay last step of each catalyst is reductive elimination i have already told you uh, before uh, this uh, lecture uh, that is that was the lecture on homogeneous and heterogeneous catalytic difference so uh, i have told you that uh, the the oxidative addition reaction is usually followed by reductive elimination for the formation of final product so this is a catalytic cycle of a homogeneous catalyst where ox if there is oxidative addition then last step will be reductive elimination so that the product can be formed easily okay so so you have um, gone through all the types of uh, hydrogen molecule activation all the types of catalytic hydrogenation cycles now we will discuss about the factors affecting the homogeneous hydrogenation reaction so now we will discuss about the factors affecting homogeneous hydrogenation okay so what are the factors the factors includes the type of catalyst and the substrate okay so these two will affect the uh, homogeneous hydrogenation reaction so these are the data related to the effect of type of catalysts on the Uh, hydrogenation process so first you will see that this is the wilkinson catalyst okay so this wilkinson catalyst is active why active because pps3 is the bulkier group that is attached there are three pps3 groups which are bulkier groups and they are uh, they they accelerate the elimination the bulkier groups accelerate the elimination of this one pps3 which is the requirement for uh, for uh, creating some more n saturation on this catalyst so that it will create a vacant site and on that vacant site uh, the hydrogen molecule can bind there okay so this is active why active because it has bulkier pps3 group which can accelerate its elimination okay now the second uh, one is you can see this is in uh, this is the catalyst in which this phenyl group is replaced by this ethyl group 
so this kind of catalyst will not very active because it reacts hydrogen irreversibly so the the, the addition should not be irreversible if it cannot further uh, it cannot uh, uh, show the migratory insertion reaction and finally the reductive elimination then product will not be formed so this is not active because it adds this hydrogen molecule irreversibly then this see this kind of uh, catalyst it is again active because it can re reversibly attach h2 molecule this h2 molecule is reversibly attached so this is a good catalyst now see this catalyst so in case of this catalyst again it is not active because in the in the transition series it is uh, at the lower position and it will form a strong bond with p so there is the bonding between ir and p is strong so that this pph3 cannot be eliminated easily so because the first requirement of this kind of catalysis is the elimination of this uh, one uh, this ligand to create some vacant position okay so uh, so these are the different types of catalyst which can be active or which can be uh, non active in for the catalytic hydrogenation reaction now uh, because this uh, this hydrogenation requires coordinatively unsaturated site generally uh, that uh, that uh, includes the uh, get that uh, uh, activation of hydrogen molecule through oxidative addition so they require coordinatively unsaturated metal center and coordinatively unsaturated metal center means the, if they are positively charged then they are more active towards catalytic hydrogenation so more positive charge more coordination and saturation so they will be more active towards catalytic hydrogenation okay so more the more the positive charge more coordinatively unsaturation more deficiency of electrons so they will undergo catalytic hydrogenation reaction so you can see uh, i have written three catalysts okay so this is our wilkinson catalyst this is opsborn uh, catalyst uh, okay and this is krebs tree catalyst so we can see the difference uh, in their reactivity towards different substituents so these are the substrates okay so here you can see that this catalyst this wilkinson catalyst is almost is its rate is about 650 for this linear kind of molecule and for this kind of molecule where the double bond is present inside the ring it is 700 and for this it is not active okay this is having the positive charge so more coordination uh, more uh, coordinatively unsaturation on this rh because it is positive so you can see that due to this positive charge due to its more coordination unsaturation its rate reaction increased by almost 6 times okay so it is more active as compared to wilkinson catalyst and if we see the case of krebs catalyst is because it again it has positive charge and it, due to this positive charge it has coordination unsaturation on ir so you can see that it is about 10 times uh, more active as compared to this wilkinson catalyst so it is uh, uh, most active Uh, uh, the catalyst in the catalytic hydrogenation and as we go from here to here you can see that this catalyst is ac also active for this very highly substituted olefin okay so we will discuss later about the substrate we here we are only discussing about the difference between these three because there is difference in their coordination unsaturation due to the presence of this plus charge so this plus charge uh, due to this plus charge this will become a, a, a coordinatively unsaturation center so its uh, reactivity will be higher now we will see the effect of substrate on the catalytic hydrogenation rate okay so uh, the substrate that uh, that is olefin with polar groups show faster hydrogenation rate okay so this is having the polar group first thing that these will undergo faster hydrogenation as compared to the 
olefins that are non polar okay so this is the order of ability of the olefins to coordinate with the hydrogenation catalyst so in this direction their ability to coordinate with the hydrogenation catalyst increases so this will be the order of rate of hydrogenation as they will coordinate more they will increase the rate of hydrogenation number second thing you will see that uh, that will discussed in the second part okay that is about the substitution of this olefinic double bond what kind of substitution is there so more the substitution less will be the rate of hydrogenation in case of especially in case of wilkinson catalyst in all cases i have shown you in the previous the table where you have seen that the rate of hydrogenation that will also depends upon the type of olefin so if there is polar group the rate will uh, increase and if the more substituted olefin will show slower hydrogenation rates and now this in this case you will see again the effect of substrate substitution in the previous case you have studied about the substrate polarity in this case the factor is substrate so substitution so you can uh, arrange the olefins in order of their substitution so in case case of mono substituted uh, olefins the rate will be the highest so this is the order of reactivity of these olefins if it is mono substituted it will be highest active high this then di substituted then tri substituted then tetra substituted so sub tetra substituted substrate will show the lowest reactivity okay now this is the example so uh, there are if you see this structure is having two double bonds okay so if we use this wilkinson catalyst then it will reduce this double bond not this double bond so you can see the product is here is no double bond so this will hydrogenate and this will not because if you see this double bond there is one substitution two substitution so it is more substituted more crowding is there in this case less crowding is there so uh, this i i have already told you that this kind of homogeneous hydrogenation is very selective very selective because it attacks on the uh, uh, the double bond which, uh, which is less substituted so this is less substituted double bond so this will attack on this double bond and if this kind is this kind of product will be the major product of hydrogenation and if isomerization will take place then it could be this could be the minor product but if we hydrogenate this kind of compound in presence of palladium catalyst so palladium catalyst will act as heterogeneous catalyst so this palladium catalyst will hydrogenate both these uh, double bonds so this kind of product will obtain so you can see the difference between heterogeneous hydrogenation and homogeneous hydrogenation in case of homogeneous hydrogenation this is a very selective kind of process so it is selective towards the substrate that the substrate with with the lowest substitution it will hydrogenate while in case of heterogeneous catalyst is this is all the kind of double bonds they can hydrogenate so this is the main difference between heterogeneous and homogeneous catalysis so these are some more examples where you can see that Now this is the structure here this double bond is present inside the ring and uh, here the the substitution the uh, substitution is higher so one Two and three, so it is uh, more substituted, and this is exocyclic double bond. So what will happen? This homogeneous catalyst, this Wilkinson catalyst, will not hydrogenate this. Or you have already studied that they will not attack on the groups like CO, like CN. They will not attack on these groups, and they will also not attack on the double bonds. They are present inside the ring because they are more substituted. So they will attack on the exocyclic double bond. okay so this will be the product now in this case simple this double bond uh, will be hydrogenate and this will be the product 
in this case it can also hydrogenate the alkynes so this alkyne this triple bond can reduce to the double bonded product so this is again a hydrogenous uh, catalytic hydrogenation reaction shown by this wilkinson catalyst and this is a typical example where you can see that there are one double bond two double bond three double bond these uh, uh, these are the carbonyl groups which cannot be attacked by this wilkinson catalyst so these are the three bonds which have to be uh, hydrogenate so what which double bond will be attacked by this wilkinson catalyst so that double bond will be this a a double bond will hydrogenate because you can see that here this double bond is present on the carbon atom which is highly substituted and this double bond is near to the carbon atom which is highly substituted so this double bond and this double bond they are not attacked by this wilkinson catalyst but the reduction will takes place at this double bond which is a so this kind of product will be obtained so so we can say that this wilkinson catalyst is very selected towards substrate because the more the substitution is there the uh, the slower will be the rate of hydrogenation now uh, we uh, can uh, further study about the directional effect of hydrogenation so directional effect of hydrogenation that is uh, studied by crabtree on the krebs catalyst crabtree's catalyst so this catalytic hydrogenation shows the directive influence also okay so hydrogen added generally hydrogen will add to the same phase or site of the previously coordinated groups if these kind of groups like oh come and ome they are already present on the substrate this olefin then hydrogen will bind on the similar site that of these kind of groups so this is the example you can see that here uh, this is the olefinic group to which this catalytic hydrogenation will going to takes place and here one oh group is present on some plane okay then after homogeneous catalytic process the hydrogen will bind on the same plane where the oh group was bind so you can see that i have shown with the similar plane this hydrogen will bind on the similar plane where the oh was present so again there is an other another example where you can see that there is an oh group this group may be come this group may be ome so there is the presence of this oh group now the catalytic hydrogenation of this double bond should be undertaken in the presence of homogeneous catalyst okay now you can see that two kind of product may be formed in one product this oh phase and the added h phase can be different and here the phase of the added hydrogen and this previously attached coordinated group they are in the same plane so the percentage will be higher for such kind of product as compared to this product okay so in case of homogeneous catalysis this product will be major product where the hydrogen will bind on the same phase where the the previously coordinated groups like oh come and ome are present while in case of heterogeneous catalyst so if we we'll take the example of palladium catalyst that is a, a heterogeneous catalyst so if hydrogenation will takes place for the same compound you will see that this will be the major product in case of heterogeneous catalyst where the 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 phase of this coordinated group and the incoming uh, h are the different uh, phases having the different phases so this will be the major product this will be the minor product so this is the difference between heterogeneous and homogeneous catalysis where you can see that uh, the product that is the major in case of homogeneous catalysis that will become minor in case of heterogeneous catalysis so we have to select the process by which uh, we have to uh, hydrogenate the olefin which process is suitable if we if we require this kind of product then we have to go through the homogeneous catalysis if we we require this kind of product then we have to undergo this kind of uh, heterogeneous catalysis for catalytic hydrogenation now an important aspect of this 
homogeneous catalytic hydrogenation is asymmetric hydrogenation so it is very important uh, catalytic hydrogenation that is helpful in synthesizing asymmetric kind of molecules that are useful medicinally pharmaceutically so the shock and ops bond catalyst is useful in asymmetric hydrogenation so we can create we can generate asymmetric centers in the olefins and uh, they can be you, you you know better than stereo selective centers stereo selective stereo specific compounds they can use for pharmaceutical uh, in, uh, industries so this is the example showing how alkene with prochiral property can be helpful in synthesizing asymmetric molecule so you can see that this is a uh, this is an olefin where this carbon is attached to the two different alkyl or allyl groups so this these two groups are different so if uh, this olefin will undergo hydrogenation then it will convert into ch3 and once h will bond to this c center so that it can produce asymmetric centers it can produce chiral molecule because this carbon is prochiral okay so prochiral because there are two different groups attached to this carbon atom so as we undergo the catalytic hydrogenation the formation of chiral molecule can take place so so this is the advantage of this homogeneous catalytic hydrogenation which can be represented by an example of synthesis of l dopa so the catalytic hydrogenation it is used in the synthesis of l dopa l dopa is a medicine medicine that is used to, to treat the parkinson's disease so it is an important uh, medicine which is used to cure the parkinson's disease and this can be prepared through catalytic hydrogenation process which uses homogeneous catalysts so this these are the uh, catalyst the olefin the product i have not shown you the cycle the catalytic cycle actually these all undergo the catalytic cycle and finally we will got the product that is l dopa okay so this kind of catalyst can be undertaken so this catalyst is having this rh group you remember that ops bond uh, that shock uh, ops bond catalyst it is having when rh center two phosphine ligands and one uh, that uh, diene uh, kind of ligand so now we have modified this uh, this ligand this phosphine ligand modified so that it becomes uh, something chiral so catalyst become chiral so so we have taken such kind of catalyst modified with some modifications and then the olefin that will going to react with this catalyst uh, this kind of olefin has been taken and after undergoing catalytic hydrogenation this double bond will hydrogenate okay these double bond will not hydrogenate because these are not favored strictly favored uh, double bonds are not there so this double bond will hydrogenate and this kind of product will uh, will uh, uh, be prepared and here you can see that because this is the r1 group and this is r2 group and here is the double bond so this center is prochiral center so after addition of this h2 one h will add here and the other h will add here so it becomes uh, this uh, this there is gen generation of this uh, this chirality so here the chirality is there this is h group this is comi group this is nhcomi and this is the other group so it becomes the chiral center and this can be converted into fine this is the actually this is the final product of this uh, homogeneous catalytic process and the product can be prepared by other method so from this uh, this final product from the catalytic hydrogenation reaction it can be converted into such kind of product which is having the chiral center so it is l dopa and uh, it's uh, um, 
efficiency is very higher so we will get around 97% l-dopa which is used for the treatment of parkinson's disease so in this manner you can see the importance of homogeneous catalytic hydrogenation in pharmaceutical industry also so now we will conclude the uh, about the uh, catalytic hydrogenation reaction uh, it's the factors affecting catalytic hydrogenation and uh, what are the applications of this catalytic hydrogenation reaction so i have uh, taught you about the dihydride catalytic hydrogenation reaction in which the uh, the uh, activation of hydrogen molecule takes place so oxidative addition reaction and in the in this in uh, under this a topic you have studied two catalysts uh, that are wilkinson catalyst and opsborn shock opsborn catalyst their uh, their uh, the cycle is something different in that that in case of wilkinson catalyst first the addition of h2 oxidative addition of h2 will takes place then olefin will add while in case of uh, so, uh, this opsborn catalyst first olefin will uh, attach and after that the oxidative addition of hydrogen molecule will takes place and then uh, we have studied the different factors which can affect the uh, the uh, hydrogenation catalytic hydrogenation and those factors will include the catalyst itself and the substrate so catalyst as the coordination and saturation on the catalyst will increase or uh, we will say that uh, this positive charge will increase then its activity will also increase and if the, if the bulkier groups are present then the bulkier groups uh, on the catalyst will enhance the rate of hydrogenation reaction then we have studied the substrate uh, qualities one is polar substrate and other is less substituted substitu uh, su substrate so if the substrate is less substituent or it is uh, more polar then uh, the catalytic hydrogenation rate will be higher and then we have studied about the directing effect of high catalytic hydrogenation and also about the asymmetric synthesis of pharmaceutically important molecules so because in the presence so pro prochiral centers on the olefin we can synthesize asymmetrical uh, molecules because stereoisomers they are very important in medicinal uh, chemistry so uh, this catalytic uh, hydrogenation uh, that is through homogeneous catalytic process it is a very important uh, catalytic process mm, so this is all about catalytic hydrogenation and uh, you can understand better in the better way so thank you very much have a good day and thank you very much